and got it. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. I'm Terry Cole, and um, I do have an icebreaker, so we'll save it for then. Hi, Julie. I don't know everybody, but I'm delighted to have people here. And you can put in the chat um, sort of your name, uh, where you're located, and uh, how long you've been with SVP. Hi, Melissa. Um, and then we will get going. Um, I'm in the north end, and I understand in the south end there's quite a bit of wind going on. Oh, John is in the waiting room, and I think he's been in these. Whoa, John is return attendee. Wow. Can't keep me away. Dang. Are you my train the trainer person? <laughs> I got a smile out of him. So I hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, we have a little bit of sun break here in North Seattle. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm just going to start a little bit as people trickle in a little bit about me. We do have an icebreaker, so we'll get to know you a little bit. Um, you know, oh, another one. Whoa, well, look at this. People are just pouring in. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, I retired about, you know, with COVID, I don't know time frames anymore, uh, uh, four or five years ago. And uh, before that, like the year before I retired, I started volunteering for a small uh, nonprofit. And I started to pull the thread on, whoa, there's things that are affecting the nonprofit's um, purpose, which was providing post-secondary education to incarcerated individuals. And I didn't realize, whoa, there's so much that happens um, that you need to advocate for uh, legislatively that, that affects all these pet issues that I have. And then I joined, uh, welcome people as you come in, I'm just introducing myself. And then I joined ACLU People Power, and it was first started right after the 2016 election for obvious reasons. And it was the first time uh, I actually met with my electeds, and I started actually following four bills in uh, our state legislature. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. More people coming, that's exciting. And then I also joined a little activist group, uh, Wallingford Indivisible. I'm sure there's lots of indivisibles uh, across the state, wherever you are. It's lovely to be in community with others. Um, and then I began tracking lots of bills during the legislative session. And I began to learn some of the ins and outs. And I'm just so thrilled because SVP has allowed me to expand even further and share. Um, I am not an expert. I'm just gonna say, I'm not an expert. And if you walk away with anything today, walk away with, you don't need to be an expert to engage with your electeds and to have huge influence in what happens in our state legislature and laws on issues that you care about. So I'm not an expert. It's an ongoing process. I put together some, some slides just to share with you sort of my learnings and my experience. It is really a low risk activity with huge impact to make your voice heard with your state elected officials and your county officials and your state, uh, your city councilmen. It's just astounding how much impact you can have and you don't have to be an expert. Um, so welcome everybody. I think I'm gonna officially start. And what I would like to do is I'd really like to spend about mm, 45 minutes and just go through the material. And I'm just gonna do a survey of what it means when our state legislature is in session and how you can advocate and make your voice heard without being an expert. 
And then I'm going to stop and, and we're going to, if you have your, lap, obviously you all have your laptops, we can dig into the website, I can answer questions, it can be much more expansive. I don't know if there are people who are gated by an hour, I know this is scheduled for an hour and a half, but I'm going to try and gear to 45 minutes and so jot down your questions as we go through with this, obviously stop me if I'm saying something that's just not clear, and then we'll have plenty of time. Um, so in order to start. Wow, this is so popular. I'm so excited. I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. And we always start with land acknowledgements in Seattle. And I think Seattle is one of the areas that 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 has done it over a number of years. And I absolutely want to acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish people um, and the first people of Seattle. And um, but we, and it's good to start with land acknowledgement, but this is just a start in order to develop an authentic relationship. And I'm just speaking from my heart. I'm the lead partner for United Indians. I've been humbled over the past uh, three years that I've been working with them and how much we don't know and we didn't learn and what the you know history of the victors, you know, starting to learn the history of those, like, never even thought about it. You know, in our constitution, natives are not even people. They're not even recognized. Um, so I think it's important for people to get to start with land acknowledgement, then get educated. And there's a lot of ways to get educated. And there are a lot of wonderful organizations in Seattle. Seattle is one of six cities with a very large urban population. There are reasons for that, but that's for another lecture. And there is, of course, United Indians All Tribe Foundation. And um, when you do your shopping for the holidays, they actually make it very easy either on the website or they have an art mart where they have all their vendors at Daybreak Star, where you can pay indigenous people directly for um, their crafts and help support them. And so I, I will look it up towards the end. I think it's the third weekend of November. They also have a magnificent website. You can do order. And by the way, that was an affiliated SVP engagement to help them with their website and get the e-commerce uh, optimized. And you can also sign up to, they have a radio station at United Indians, Daybreak Star Radio. You can listen to that. And there's also one newsletter. I'll, I'll pop it in the chat later. It's called Indigenously. She's taking a little bit of a break, but I've learned, I can't tell you how much I've learned. So it's important to have land acknowledgements, but I thought it was also important to say, eh, it's just a start. Obviously you can pay the rent with the Duwamish tribe um, as well. So with that, I am going to start. And where is my, here it is. Okay. And excuse me, I'm going to put this in screen a slide. And my cat now wants to leave the room. Thank you. So as I mentioned in my in my brief intro, uh, I, I, it's overwhelming, and. I find being with other people in, in, in community like SVP or also I, I'm in an indivisible group, I really came across this quote from Common Power, which is another amazing organization that you can get affiliated with. And I love this quote because this quote really sums up my main message about today. And in, if this floats your boat, engaging. Um, from Helen Keller. I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. So that is the spirit of today. Uh, I'm. This is one of three sessions. Um, there are lots of different ways to think about advocacy. I'm just really focused on the state legislature, but the principles apply to your county, they apply to your uh, city uh, councilmen, uh, council people. Um, they also apply to federal a little bit less. It's a, honestly, it's a little bit harder to have that immediate impact at the federal level, which is why I love at the state level. 
you have to understand how a bill becomes a bill. I'm not going to sing you the song, but I, I am going to cover, and most importantly, your moments of influence. And then we'll, at the end, we'll poke around wild edge. Uh, we call it wild edge, those who engage, but we have a marvelous legislator website, and it's actually chock full of really fabulous information, and it's set up in a way that tells you someone wants us to engage, because I was trying to help my kids who live in Illinois, and they have a website that says, we don't want any engagement, because it was impossible to navigate. So I'd like to go around um, very, very quickly. I'm going to pop up the participants. I'm going to call on people. Super quick. Um, your name, do you know, and, and you can say, I don't know, I'm here to learn, or do you know what legislative district you live in? A legislative district is your state district, not your congressional district, which is DC. So you'll see CD or LD in a lot of emails and, and materials, but um, LD means legislative district, and those are your electeds in Olympia. Um, have you ever met with one of your electeds? And do you follow any policy groups? And it's not meant to be a end all be all, but it gives me a little bit of an idea of, of like I mentioned up till five days, five years ago, never met with an elected, barely knew my legislative district. So no shame in this. So I'm just gonna call people and go down real quick. Um, and I'm gonna start at the bottom and I can't see you all, but I'm just gonna, we have Renee. Oh, hey. Hi, this is Renee Rosak, and I'm, I think I'm in the 43rd. Excellent. Have, have I met with one of my electeds? Long ago, I met with Jamie Peterson, and I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, sure. How about uh, Ray? I'm in District 7. At, I don't know my state uh, district. And I recently, just last month, met with uh, three representatives uh, at a uh, representative meeting um, for the first, well, second time. Not very frequent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, how about Kyle? Hi there, um, Legislative Districts uh, 37, and then um, I have met with one of my electeds, um, Kirsten Tal Harris Talley, and then um, not actively following policy lo lobby groups. Hopefully after this, you might consider. Yes. Love that. <laughs> How about Kalika? Hi, all. Sorry, I'm video off. I'm multitasking here. Uh, district 20, the 21st district? And uh, no, I have not. Excellent. Julie. Hi, I'm also in the 37th. Um, I have met with Kristen Harris Talley and with Rebecca Saldana. Um, and there are a couple of policy groups I follow. Which policy groups, Julie? Um, well, my, my own organization, Tubman Health, um, and um, uh, Northwest Health Law Advocates, I, I, I follow, and, um, uh, oh, um, Jewish Coalition for um, Immigrant Justice is one I've started following, um, and Bend the Ark a bit. Um, let's see. That's good. Probably a couple others in there, but. So your email is always full. I love that, Julie. Oh my God. <laughs> How about John? Uh, I am in the fight in 43rd uh, and have met with, uh, have met uh, with Nicole Macri at least uh, once. Uh, and I follow the uh, Washington, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name. The it's either the center. Or it's something for police accountability. The you. Oh, think, excellent! Washington uh, Coalition for police the coalition. Yeah, uh, as well as uh, uh, the there's a uh, a group that's working on uh, clemency as well as legal financial uh, obligations. That's a coalition of the disability rights uh, Washington and some uh, uh, some other groups. So, 
These are all great groups. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm just going down the list, although it's funny, it, it changes. So it kind of freaking me out. Amanda. Hi, yeah. Uh, I don't remember the number of my district. It's the kind of larger one east of Redmond that encompasses some suburban and rural, which makes it an interesting district and otherwise no, no electeds or policy groups, but I'm interested. Perfect. This will be great. Um, Melissa. I am in uh, the 34th district, uh, West Seattle, um, and I've met with our state senator, uh, Joe Wynn. He's actually a neighbor, lives on my block, and, yeah. uh, and then uh, House Representative uh, Fitzgibbons uh, did a lobby day with uh, him uh, through uh, uh, Pro Choice Washington. Um, and I follow Pro Choice Washington um, and the uh, AUW, American Association of University Women, um, and all things kind of related to that, um, and in, involved in um, uh, uh, on the party side as well, following uh, the uh, legislative district uh, that's going on there, as well as another organization called Electing Women Seattle. Oh, excellent. I want to learn a little bit about that. Um, Elisa. Um, so I'm in Florida, and um, I'm actually not sure of the district um, offhand. Um, and no, I have not met with any um, officials. Well, Lisa, you're going to have to let us know how the the, the legislative site looks in uh, Florida. I have a sneaking suspicion, maybe not user friendly. I don't know why I think that, but I kind of do. Um, and so now, um, SVP staff, how about Heather? Uh, I'm in the 43rd. I've met with my reps um, and I follow lots of policy groups, some that have been mentioned. I'd add Race Forward and the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights. Awesome. I see I've got some train the trainers in this group. I love it. Letty, how about you? Um, I think I'm in the first uh, district. Um, I have not met with any of my elected and I can't name any of the policy or lobby groups that I follow. Awesome, thank you. Tara, how about you? Um, I'm in the 46th district. I have not met any of my representatives. I do follow different policies uh, on homelessness and criminal justice reform and lately stuff with Iran. This is great. And of course, Emiko, I know you're all over this, but please share with us. Oh, thanks. I'm in the 37th. I have not met with any current reps. I've met with many reps in my lifetime, but uh, not recently. And I pretty actively follow federal and state and local transportation issues. Transportation, I love that. Um, so this is interesting. First of all, um, thank you all for coming today. I'm kind of humbled. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm just going to share my own experience. I'm just going to breeze through the material. There's a number of people on here that have a great experience. So I want to make sure that we kind of hold questions because I think when we get to the questions and we start navigating, there are a number of people here who also will have great experiences to share and not be just mine. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in if my clicker will work. There we go. So how a bill becomes a bill. And I want you to think in the back of your mind, the song and where it's going. So, you know, basically the steps are the same. There are nuances from state to state. There are nuances with federal, but this is basic. You've got two chambers, right? We're bicameral uh, uh, type of government in the United States. There's the, the House, 
there's the Senate, and then there's a governor or a president, right? Depending on state or federal. And basically bills start in either chamber. They might start in, in one chamber, they might start in other. They might start in both chambers, companion bills, or they might have competing bills. And they all have to start in a policy committee. And um, this is where elections really matter because, who, oh, let's let Tali in. This is where elections really matter because whatever party controls the state or federal, they get to chair all the committees and they get to decide what they hear and what they don't hear. Um, and so there's always a policy committee and either it comes up, it doesn't come up, it gets debated in a public hearing or it doesn't, or it, and it gets a vote or it doesn't. You will see before session, something like 2000 bills get pre-filed in Washington state. Uh, and not all of them even get to a hearing. Not all of them are even assigned to a policy committee. Um, but the first step is to get through a policy committee, get through a vote, pass the vote. And then if there's a fiscal impact, I think in Washington state, it's greater than, if the fiscal note is greater than $50,000, I think it then has to go to a finan financial committee. And then it has to be heard and it has to have a hearing and it has to have a vote. And then it goes to a floor vote. Then it goes to the opposite house, it goes through all the same steps in the opposite house. And then if the bills changed or they're competing bills, they need to be negotiated and, and resolved. And then it can be voted on. And if it passes both houses, then the governor doesn't sign in uh, or veto it in 15 days in Washington state, it automatically becomes law. And the legislation will indicate when it becomes effective. There are dates here. The dates are critical. These are the dates things have to happen in each stage, right? So these dates are from 2020, 2022, because 2023 calendar is not up yet. So uh, last year's session started, I think it was January 14th, if I'm not mistaken, the second Monday of of January is uh, when session always starts. And so there was only a short four, four and a half weeks and boom, that was your first, it's called a cutoff. If it doesn't get voted through by that cutoff, that piece of legislation is done. It doesn't move, we're done with it for the year. So you start with a bunch and it just funnels down. Um, I kind of like it because it's super logical. It's got dates and you know what you have to do when. So where to start? Uh, there will be different dates. Um, this year, of course, Washington State is a, a biennium. It's a two-year cycle. So this is a budget year. One year is a budget year, longer session. One year is a policy year, shorter session. Uh, this is a budget year. Budget years are tough. It's tough to push policy significant legislation around policy and budget years because everyone is focused on budget. Um, and we are a part-time legislature and it either goes from the second Monday in January uh, till, I don't know, I think it's the third week of March or April, third week of April. Um, it's kind of forward, straightforward, and it's kind of messy, but you have to know the dates and you take action before the dates. So where to start? Know your electeds. Everybody here has two reps and a state senator. You have two state reps and one state senator. Know them. Get to know what committees they're on. Get to know what bills they might be sponsoring. And I can't emphasize this enough. Pick up the phone and call their office because there's a legislative aide who answers the phone and they're the most wonderful people in the world and they love talking to constituents, more or less. I mean, every so often you hit one on a bad day, but they will tell you everything, you know, what is, what is my rep focused on? What is my rep sponsoring? What bills are they trying to pass? What are their top initiatives? What do you think the chances are? They'll tell you everything. All you have to do is pick up a phone and talk. And sometimes for new people, it's more comfortable talking to a legislative assistant before you actually talk to the electeds. And then pick an issue area. Uh, I started with that Helen Keller quote. There, 
there's so much, right? Environment, reproductive health care, democracy itself, how we vote, voting rights, immigration, um, taxation, you name it. There, the criminal justice. Um, there's just a plethora. My, my experience is in order not to get burnt out, in order not to get overwhelmed, in order not to check out, just pick an area and just do one area. I happen to focus uh, quite a bit on criminal justice reform and that's my gig. And I have friends who are just as deep as I am in criminal justice reform on healthcare. And so it doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. Pick a lane, stick with your lane, and it will have more impact because you'll stay engaged. The third is find policy or lobby groups. Uh, I, everybody mentioned, and a lot of people here, so we can share with each other uh, when we get to the sharing part, uh, a lot of great um, lobby groups. And lobby groups and policy groups, um, these are the groups that really understand what legislation is happening. They're the experts. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to um, follow some of the, uh, the groups in your issue area. So ACLU, uh, Planned Parenthood, Demands Demand Action. For those who are more um, budget wonks, and this is a budget year, I love the Budget and Policy Center. They do a fabulous job and they give bill guidance. And uh, I'll show you an example of that on the next slide and understand your connection to an issue. It's always good to, it, what's, what's important about your voice is there's an issue you feel a connection to. And so when I talk about criminal justice reform, I've already in my mind have some talking points about it and I'll share them with you. I mean, I basically when do some variation depending on what people are talking about i always shift it to what is public safety what 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 does public safety mean to people i have young adult children and absolutely none of them would ever call a police in any situation because of how they've witnessed firsthand their non-binary or their uh, black or their hispanic friends have been treated uh, by police and i'm like that's not public safety i don't feel safe because my my children would never call police. So that's my little story. Obviously you craft it, but it's important to have sort of a hook of why do you care about this issue? Because you're going to articulate it to people. That's what you're going to tell electeds. That's how you're going to compose emails. So you want to pick an, this is again, just my guidance. And we'll hear from others. Maybe there are different ways to do it, but the way I've navigated it is pick an issue and have kind of a story or two. Reproductive health, I talk about how my daughter was in the hospital at the age of 12 um, because uh, she had uncontrolled bleeding when she started menstruation and they wouldn't release her from the hospital until she, had, she was on contraceptive. And I'm like, so all the stuff that's going on with reproductive health, it's not about abortion, it's about reproductive health and we need a much more expansive view and we need to protect those rights. My daughter would be dead, blah, blah, blah. So whatever it is, um, obviously, I'm, I'm saying it very fast. I'm very passionate about those things because they touch my kids. I'm a mom and that's how I do it. But find what works for you. And so once you find a policy or a lobby group, you don't have to be the expert because they're going to tell you what's going on. I have an example from one of the organizations that uh, John mentioned. This is the Washington Coalition for Police Accountability. I got this uh, uh, last week. They're already telling me what, what they're going to go for in the 2023 legislative session. They're looking at it in four, four areas, civil rights, criminal charges, regulatory, and officer discipline. And they're already, if you look down here, there are already four bills. And they know who the sponsors are. And they're already working with these sponsors. Unfortunately, none of them are my electeds, but um, Melissa. Wynn is uh, the sponsor of Traffic Stop Safety. And so, you know, it's like, oh my God, I can pick it up. He's, he's the sponsor. One, the legislative assistant will tell you absolutely everything you need to know because they're going to know everything about it. So whatever group you follow, they'll do something like this. 
So I'm not the expert on what are the criminal justice bills. This is an organization that I want to amplify and support. It is made up of impacted families and public defenders and legal people. They understand, and ACLU is part of this coalition, and they craft bills and they work the sponsors and they all and they have updates and they'll tell you what the actions are. And so you don't have to be an expert, but you do have to have a voice. And you do have to have a way to articulate why you care about an issue and you don't have to be an expert. So what are your moments of influence? I am gonna pause by the way, don't freak out. I'm gonna pause and then we're gonna have lots of conversation. What are your moments of influence? Your moments of, of influence are before every cutoff. I don't have the session dates yet for 2023 but you saw it's pretty fast and furious. And so when a bill is in committee, there are three things you can do. The website is fabulous. It'll tell you when there's going to be a public hearing and you can sign in pro or con. You used to have to travel to Olympia. It was, it was very much uh, um, advantaged privileged people who had cars, who could take off, who could drive to Olympia. Um, but now anybody can sign in pro or con. It used to be when you'd go to Olympia, um, there'd be maybe, I don't know, 20 to mm, huge 70 people in the room. Now they have like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people signing in saying they're for the legislation or they're against the legislation. That's easy. That's a click, click. Um, you also want to know your own le electeds. Are they on the committee? Do they chair a committee or are they sponsor of the bill? Because you're going to want to let them know they every single elected cares about their constituents when they raise their voices. There's a lot of squeaky wheel, you know, uh, uh, the, the loudest person in the room, you know, gets the most attention. And it's true. And you'd be surprised if like, 30 people call one of their electeds in the state. That's a lot. It's like my, and they count them. They keep track and they count. And the legislative assistants will say, um, we got 30 males on this and 28 of them are pro and two of them are con. Um, and so they absolutely know. And then for emailing the committee, and I'm going to send out notes so you don't have to write. This is more of a it's so easy to engage. You just have to follow dates. Uh, and then you email the committee. You can email the committee. Everything is public record. We have a fabulous website. And the way I think about emailing the committee is if the issue is partisan, everything is getting more and more partisan. It didn't used to be that way, but it really is. So now you know if it's on criminal justice reform, it's going to be partisan as hell. Um, uh, but, you know, so I will email just the Dems. If there is some nonpartisan support, and we'll show you how to see that, then I email them all. If you have a compelling personal story around the issue, email them all. Personal stories rule the day. The number of contacts and the number of personal stories. Before it goes to a floor vote, you contact your electeds. I'm your constituent. I'm watching this bill. I want it to be passed and here's why. That's it. Five sentences, but they have to hear from you. Your voice matters when we're talking about state elections, uh, state legislature. This is an example of an action alert that you might get. Ah, all groups do it a little bit differently, but this is from 2022. And you can see there were three bills. You can see this is from me. So it's criminal justice. Uh, oh, the first one is front and centered, which Ruby is part of front and centered. And they do fabulous advocacy. And I'd highly recommend everyone at SVP to follow front and centered. And they had a bill. And so you'll get updates about what's happening, this specific email, and usually you get emails once a week, sometimes you get it twice a week because there's a cutoff coming, and it'll tell you what to do, you know, go register pro, here's the bill, here's why you want to support it, here's a link, you can get more educated. I really think it's important 
to get educated, you know, do an issue area so you're a little bit more comfortable actually composing something versus just the click, click. The click, click is good, but the most impact is calling and emailing the, the committee or your rep directly with a story. I'm winding down, so we've got, wow, great. Lots of times for good conversation, then we'll go to the website. Mm -hmm. uh, do this, know who your electeds are. All of you can get on your electeds newsletters. Um, maybe not all of them do it, all of mine do it. And I, I actually get newsletters from some who aren't mine, but your city council person, your county council person, your two reps and your senator get on their emails, uh, their newsletters. It's very informative. They will tell you, here's what I'm working on. Here's the bills I care about. Go to town halls. Um, it's unfortunate. I was, I just went to a town hall for um, the city of Seattle. My council person is Dan Strauss. And there were 40 people there. And of the 40 people who were there, 25 were very vocal about what they wanted to see happen with homeless in this city. And it had to do with, we need to call victims victims, and we need to call criminals criminals, and we need to open more jails, right? I mean, and it was like one after another after another. And then there was me. And it was a little volatile. So I made the decision. I just went up to Dan afterwards because he knows me because all my electives know me. And I went up to him afterwards and I'm like, they are not your only constituents. And I work in an activist group and we're really pushing on this. And in fact, we're annoyed that we haven't really rolled out the alternative response. And he just looked at me, he goes, well, where are they? I really need them here. That's how, imp that's how impactful five people can be in a town hall. It's important. And again, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to speak from your heart and, you know, know a little bit about why you care. Um, get to know your electeds, know what they're working on, find the policy group. Bonus, join a little activist group. I have found it really rewarding to be with a little activist group because then I'm in community and I'm not doing it on my own. And we might, we get together and we talk about the bills and we educate each other and we have great conversations and then we'll call each other. Are you going to the town hall? Let's go to the town hall together. Um, Cause not all my friends are politically active, believe it or not. Um, know this, you do not have to be an expert, but you do have to reference your experience or your connection to the issue. Maybe you were a student, something happened with uh, security. Um, or your parent, there's a lot uh, that goes into that. And, and why it matters to you, it's really important to your voice has to, has to not be rote. Uh, short on point comments, either verbally or written are more effective than long expositions. You know, be respectful, always share your reasons and facts if you have any. And it's okay to leverage templates, but just know that people who just add their names to form letters, it's, it's counted as one contact. And if you get like, here, copy and paste and send this to your council person or your state rep, if you don't change the, the first couple of sentences, it's just going to count as one if you do a copy and paste. And so... That is, in my experience, why I say pick an issue area, learn a little bit about it, follow groups, and then it's easy to just, oh, this is coming up for a vote. Here's some sample uh, sentences that I can use. Let me put it in my words. I always add my own little personal ditty at the end. Send. It's not a big deal. That's it. I raced through, but we've got so many people with amazing experiences that I didn't wanna take up all the time. I am gonna stop sharing so that we can see each other. I will go to the website so we can kind of navigate it a little bit together, but I absolutely wanted to pause and give people time to react, ask questions, or those of you who also do this, there were a number of you, uh, share your experiences, especially if you have a different experience than I do and a little different way of looking at it. Let's make this a rich conversation by talking with each other.
Um, oh. Well, I just want, I thought I would first come in and say, Terry, thank you so much for this. I mean, it, it, it's not a long presentation, but it's like, this is everything I need to get started. I mean, yeah. I feel like it's everything I need to get started and was what I was looking for. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. This is Melissa, I want to ditto. I, I appreciate uh, you so much, Terry, for opening up and sharing your experiences with everyone. Um, I, I, uh, what I'd like to do is just share that as a, um, an individual who's new to the area, um, I said, okay, I, I want to get involved in the community. And how do I go about doing that? I uh, was very active uh, in Colorado where I came from. So I kind of use the same model, which is, well, I want to I want to get involved with um, a community organization. So I found out about SBP. So that was exciting. Um, I was involved with a, a donor table organization in Colorado, and there was a partner one here in uh, Washington. So I joined that. I got introduced by the folks from Colorado. So that that helped me. Uh, but then I also was very active with. Um, um, my passion is uh, 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 women's health issues, in particular abortion. And so I reached out to the Pro-Choice Washington organization and I got connected with them. And then I also, um, I'm a member of a national organization that has local chapters called the American Association of University Women and they do advocacy work as well. So I joined them uh, and uh, I, um, uh, through those two organizations, I got um, training on lobbying um, here in Washington State because it's a bit different than in Colorado. And that's how I met my house rep and, and then uh, at a block party uh, in my new uh, neighborhood, I met our state senator who lives on my block as I said. And he was very kind and said, let's have coffee. Um, I signed up for my city council uh, members um, a newsletter, and I get that. I've signed up for Mayor Harold's newsletter, and I get that, so I can kind of keep up on what's going on in the community. Uh, the AUW team, I get uh, newsletters from them, and Pro Choice Washington obviously keeps me engaged. And I do a lot of other stuff still in Colorado, and I won't talk about that, but but it, it was just kind of reaching out and starting to connect and kind of getting engaged with the various organizations. And it's um, can't make any mistakes. Um, a friend of mine, she introduced me to Common Power and I've, I've joined them, but more kind of, you know, still still learning a little bit about that organization and how it fits in with kind of what, what I'd like to do advocacy wise, um, but uh, all good. So there you go, just wanted to share. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing. And I think that that was, great because if you're new or you just haven't been engaged or you've been working like I didn't start engaging like this until I retired it's it was a great overview for you to you know I'm new here so I just started uh, getting on everybody's newsletters and reaching out um Tali you had your hand up and welcome thank you for coming um hi Terry hi this is great as usual thank you so much um, I also learn something new every time. Which is telling uh, me because you know so much about this. Well, there's so much detail involved. Um, but uh, so it's very helpful to understand the nitty gritty of the process. Um, and I just want to chime in to say I'll be following the progressive tax reform work that will be happening. Um, capital gains seems to be moving forward, which is critical for supporting um, early education programs in our state. And then um, we know that Noel Frame is putting forward a tax on wealth. Um, and that still is getting formed and she's actually invited people to uh, work on that issue and uh, we can share more resources in terms of um, organizations. Budget and Policy Center, great resource in terms of what's happening with progressive tax reform. 
And if anyone um, isn't following this issue, um, the basics are that you know our state does not have a state um, uh, income tax, and so it leaves a lot of public services pretty tight on resources. And I'm I have three kids in Seattle Public Schools, and they feel the effects every day. There's not enough counselors. There's not enough special ed teachers. Um, it's very much like if you want your kid to be successful, a lot of kids, um, uh, it's like a private public partnership between the PTAs and the families that can afford the tutoring and extra support versus um, those that can't. So that's one of the reasons I'm really passionate about tax reform and I'll be following that coming this, this coming legislative session. Um, anyone else care to share or have questions before I go to the website? Um, I have, this is Renee. I just have a follow-up kind of question comment for Tally. I'm also interested in the, <clears throat> whatever effort, policy efforts are happening around tax reform and uh, state income tax and would be interested in, Tally, if you wanna share any of your efforts or resources or advocacy work if, if you're looking for people to jump on the bandwagon with you <laughs> i'd be curious to get involved in that i'm putting in the chat uh right now the link to the budget and policy center and then um tali if you want to add uh links to the working group the tax working group. yeah yeah, I'll add um, a few links, and I will also say Emiko can chime in at some point, but SVP is going to be undertaking some um, serious work around educating partners on this issue, because it is an issue that a lot of our partner organizations, organizations that have gotten funding from SVP, are passionate about, um, because it impacts them and how they provide services for people. Um, and, and run their programs and make a difference in their communities. So, um, so you will be hearing more and um, so stay tuned for that. Awesome, thanks. And Renee, I popped that in the uh, chat to the Budget and Policy Center. Um, Great, thanks. So if people have to drop, please feel free. I am here and available. And I was going to go to the website because there's so much. This is just a fabulous website. And Melissa, it'd be interesting to hear uh, how it compares to uh, Colorado's. Um, mm -mm. Here we go. I'm going to share. Only I'm going to go to what I already have up. So um, sometimes uh, those who do this a lot just call this WALEDGE, but it's actually ledge.wa.gov. And this is it. Everything is here. Um, before I start diving in, there's another one that people seem to like. I don't know the website Balladopedia that's got chock full of information also is a resource to find out what's going on, uh, how where bills are. I personally don't use it. I prefer just our state legislature, but I thought I'd, I'd just at least show that. So here we are at, uh, wa, oops, what happened? Oh, I went to the wrong tab. Wa.ledge.gov. I can get rid of these. Got to keep up my I'm trying a new sourdough recipe. I'm kind of challenged today. Um, okay, so uh, I can't see everybody, so just come off mute and, and, and shout out. Um, this is it. It's fabulous. The first thing I went to, everything is here. They don't yet have, I went to agendas and, and calendars because this is the most important thing for me is what are cutoff dates? I need the cutoff dates because everything is linked to cutoff dates. And the session cutoff calendar, they don't have 2022 yet, uh, 2023 yet. They only have 2022, but it'll look like this. And so you know that these are the dates that you wanna make your voice heard before cutoff date. 
So, you know, if you know the, let's say the first cutoff date is somewhere around February 3rd. This is the last day um, to pass out of uh, uh, the policy committee. And let's say it's not scheduled. They schedule every Wednesday, tip, tip. They schedule every Wednesday evening. So if you go on the website on Thursdays, you'll see what's scheduled for the next week. I think that's my memory. It's either Wednesday evening or Thursday evening. I'm almost sure it's Wednesday evening. And if it's not getting scheduled for a hearing, then you're going to reach out to the sponsor. You're going to reach out to anybody on the committee you might know. And you're going to be like, I want to hear about this, especially if your elected is on the committee. So that, for example, is why it's so critical to know about the cutoff dates. It's the most critical thing to know. So then let's go back to the home. So that's where you'll find uh, schedules, agendas. The rest of it's a little wonky, so I'm not going to go into it. Now, let your voice be heard is another place that you want to know about. It's a little hard because we're not exactly in session, but I think the information from previous sessions is here. So if you click on contact your legislators, you can find out what district you're in and who represents you. And you can literally send them mail, sign up for their newsletter, call their legislative assistant. It all starts there. Contact your legislators. There you go. So easy. Um, and then you click in and you've got all their contact information and you call their, they usually have a office uh, in their district and an office in Olympia. And if you call, it doesn't matter, a legislative assistant will answer. You just say, I'm a constituent and I, uh, what is, what is my rep uh, going to sponsor next year and what are our focus areas? That's it. That's all you have to do. And they'll start talking. So that's how you contact your legislature. Then you can find how do you participate in the process. It's a nice page and it, it describes how you participate either by signing in co or pro, pro, con or pro or testifying. And I'll talk about that in a second. And then of course, I'm moving this all around. There are the bills. So this is the most important thing is bill information. We're going to look at a bill that from last year because there are no bills this year, although they will be pre-filed probably towards the end of December. There will be like 2,000 bills pre-filed. This is a budget year, which means everything starts fresh. But let's say you've got a piece of legislature that you really want to see pass to benefit Washington uh, citizens and non-citizens, um, and it doesn't get out of committee or it doesn't get through a floor vote. If you're in the first year, it automatically is reintroduced in the second year. But since this is, it's a biannual, so this is the first year, budget year, everything starts fresh, everything has to be reintroduced and um, reassigned. So let's take a bill, because you're going to get a bill number from your policy groups, and that's, that's what you're going to want to follow. Bill pages, most important. Let's look at, um, oh, what the hell, protect juvenile records. Um, I, I did a lot to support um, reforming how we look at juveniles in the state, specifically because of brain science, what we know and how horrible the bill, uh, our laws are around juveniles. So let's look at HB 2034, a random bill. HB, House Bill, SB, Senate Bill, doesn't matter. HB, those are the bills that start in the thousands or the two thousands. SB, Senate Bills, they start in, I believe they start in the four thousands, five thousands, six thousands. That's it. Bill number. So HB uh, 2034. And of course, this is from 2122. You see how everything's going to be grouped in two years because that's the way our legislative legislative session works. So we're going to search for this. You can see here's pre-filed bills. I'll look at that towards the end of the year to see what's pre-filed for next session. Uh, invalid. Oh, why is that invalid? Oh, because you don't do the HB and SB. Yeah, I forgot about that. See, there we go. So this is everything you want to know about this uh, bill. 
I was very interested in this bill because it protects juvenile records. It gets them expunged. It treats young adults and, and juveniles like they don't have prefrontal cortexes until they're in their later 20s. And anybody who is a parent has observed this. Um, so here you see that the first name is your prime sponsor. So this happens to be Representative Frame, who's running for Senate, soon to be Senate Frame, uh, Senator Frame, we hope, uh, in my district, the 36. So the first name is the prime sponsor. So if you want to know anything about the bill and why it's stuck and what it's going to take, and if you need to raise your voice, yeah, you call and the legislative assistant will tell you everything you need to know about it. And then you can see these are all the co-sponsors. Now, just because somebody is not listed does not mean they don't support it. It just means they didn't get their name to co-sponsor in, in the cutoff time frame. Everything is a cutoff time frame. So you can see the Taylor Harris, uh, Liz Berry, Fitzgibbon, Simmons, Ramel, Chase, and Macri. They all are co-sponsors. Then you come down here and you can see all those gates that I showed. Well, introduced means it's assigned to a committee. In committee, well, look, it died. It never got out of the first committee. You can just see by the graphic, if it gets through the committee and it gets voted on, then it goes to the floor. It gets to, it has to be on the floor calendar, which is a whole nother thing. And then it needs to pass the chamber and then it goes to the um, opposite chamber and it has to make it all the way through. And after passage, you can track it. Although if the governor does nothing after 15 days in Washington state law, it just becomes uh, law. Okay, so this gives you a, just a really quick visual of how the bill is doing and where it is in the process. If you look down here, if you're wonky, which I am not, you can click and read the actual bill. Sometimes, and that sometimes there are summaries. If there's a fiscal note, it means it's going to go to a fiscal, it's likely to go to a fiscal committee because there's fiscal impact. You always have to, but I think the fiscal impact is 50,000 and above. So if there's a fiscal note, you take a look and it's over 50,000, it's like, oh damn, it's got to go through a fiscal committee as well. That's horrible. And then there are things like substitute bills, but that's very wonky. We're not going to get into it. Here you can see there's first reading, second reading, third reading. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. That gets a little wonky. Here you can see January 24th, there was a public hearing at 1.30. And here are the committee materials that you can click on. So what this says is if you're following a policy group, they will send you an alert probably just the week prior to Jan 24th and say, Sign in pro, sign in pro. We want this to pass. Please comment on the bill and email the committee because that's before the public hearing. You want to do it before the public hearing. Or you might want to say, I want to testify. And it sounds scary as hell. And you might not have be chosen to testify because there are too many people who testify. And usually testifiers are panels of experts or panels of impacted people. And, but you know, you can testify and have a prepared statement that lasts literally 20 seconds and it's effective. And you tell your story and why you care about the issue and why you're advocating for a bill or against a bill. So here you can see uh, what it traveled through last year. If you wanna comment on this bill, I usually do comment on this bill right before a floor vote because look at how awesome this website is. You click on comment on this bill. It asks you what district you're in by looking up your address and it'll tell you all three of your electeds, and it'll say, who do you want to send this to? If it's in the Senate, you send it to the sen your senator. If it's in the House, you send it to your reps. And then you can see how easy it is. You do support, oppose, or neutral, and then you make a comment. You don't have to make a comment, but it's helpful to have two or three sentences, brief sentences. I support us treating juveniles with the best brain science that we know of that tells us when it is reasonable to use 
anything punitive to children who don't have brains formed. Something, doesn't matter. That's all you need to put in. Then you send your comment. They count them. They literally count them. If they're not form, if it's a form or a straight cut and paste, they don't count it. So don't do that. So that was one bill. Let's look at a different bill. Uh, this one was, so we, I'm hoping this comes up again. It's reintroduced and we're going to see this one again because we have to do a better job of protecting and expunging juvenile records because we know it is disproportionately, the way our system works, it disproportionately pulls into our, uh, uh, our system um, natives, highest percentage, and then Blacks and then other Hispanics, youth of color. And if we don't, if we don't treat their records the way we should, it already sets them up in life before they've gotten out of high school to have lots of issues. Uh, and that is, um, in my opinion, an embarrassment that that's the way we treat kids. Okay, so let's look up 1788. This has to do with um, vehicle pursuits. This was so hot the last two years uh, in the wake of uh, uh, the racial reckoning and the summer of protests after the murder of George Floyd, George Floyd uh, Washington State Legislature advanced. And who mentioned that they had met with the 40, the uh, 40, not the 43rd, the 45th. Um, no, the 43rd. John, you met with, uh, what's your senator? I, for, I forget his name. He was the one who pushed through a lot of these great bills. Um, and you know, you're, I'm, 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 rand, I'm, I'm getting a little scattered. I apologize. When there's a big issue like reproductive health, criminal justice, uh, uh progressive taxation, um, Usually the caucuses will work across chambers. And so they will determine, do we just push a house bill and then get it through the Senate? Do we push a Senate bill and then push it through the house? Do we do companion bills? Uh, what's the priority? Do we raise it? There are more bills than what gets addressed in committee or on the floor. Um, and so they will work together. Um, you know what, this is unsatisfactory because it looks like they reset uh, everything in here and you, you can't see a bill that went all the way through. So you'll just have to trust me on that. And I got a little scattered, I apologize. Uh, let me get focused again. So you can look up bills, you can get the history, you can understand where it is, you can look up fiscal notes, original bills, if somebody's trying to substitute a bill, you'll get an email from a policy group that will tell you what's going on with this bill and take an action. It's always before a cutoff date and you click on comment on this bill. Let's go back to the home. I'm gonna take a pause. Any, any questions or additions or or clarifications to how do you just look at bills and see what's going on? Oh, wait, there's one more thing I wanna do. Sorry, I got, I, I was so focused and so good in the last three minutes, I just lost and went all over the place, I apologize. In the bill history, they record votes and it's great. So you can look at this past, it died. It actually got out of committee and it died. It never got to the floor calendar. So if you look at the majority report, it tells you who signed it. This was controversial. The impacted families and the um, policy groups I was following did not want this bill. They were rolling back a significant limitation on when you can engage in a vehicle pursuit because there's no data to support that it increases public safety. And in fact, it dangers innocent bystanders, passengers, and people in uh, vehicles, as well as police. Um, and you can see, wow, Rep. Goodman was really good on, on, on criminal justice reform, and he is a Democrat, but he, he worked with the Republicans, and they did a rollback, and it was really disappointing in the community. But you know what? Democracy is messy. 
And that's just the way it is. And you can't give up. And so here you can see everybody who signed it. And this, it's unusual to see that this was uh, um, Goodman signed on. And then all these other names are, are Republicans that hate any criminal justice reform. This was very um, contentious. And then you can look at the minor minority report who voted against. I was looking at these for my reps in the House, uh, Liz Berry and Noel Frame. And I contacted them and said, please vote negative, uh, against, this is why, blah, blah, blah. And then I looked at this to make sure they did. And then I sent them a thank you note. And um, my reps are not, they, they did it in, the, in, in a different bill on a floor vote. But here you can see that uh, Johnson, Davis, Simmons, and Ty did not. I actually might, I'm not their constituent, but I, I actually felt so strongly about this. I might've emailed them and thanked them right, that they voted against something. It was it was a hard vote for them to take. So here you can see who voted for, who voted against. And based on the policy team that I, I follow, I know which, which way I want it to go. I'm gonna pause. Anything more questions or comments about following bills? It's a lot, have I overdone it? I got one thumbs up and I, I can't see anybody else. Okay, so obviously here's find your district, but the vast majority of you knew your district, but that's super easy. Here you have all the House of Representatives. Here you have the Senate. Um, committees, how are you gonna know who, who sits on what? Well, you can either go to your elected and they'll list their committees, or you can look at the committees. Let's say, you, uh, Melissa, I, I believe you said reproductive health. Let's look at the Senate committees. So uh, we've got, where will reproductive health likely fall? Health and long-term care. It's gonna fall in this committee. You know, you can sort of look at the committees. Let's say you're big on data privacy. That was one of my pet peeves, was data privacy. That's an environment, energy, and technology. So if you've got an issue area that you care about, you can look and see, okay, so it's going to fall. Reproductive health is health and long-term care. And we are going to look at, so who sits on this committee and are any of them my electeds? And this tells you. So uh, an, uh, Rep. Uh, S Senator Cleveland is the chair, Fracht is the vice chair, and it tells you who's Republican, who's a Democrat. This is how when I want to, uh, I, I, in the past I have crafted action males, but this is how I'm like, I only want to send to the Dems or I only want to send to the Republicans. This is how you can tell who's who. And then you can always get in contact with staff as well if you have a question, although I usually just use the legislative assistant. And you can call the legislative assistant of the sponsor and they'll tell you everything you need to know. So, you know, Melissa, the first thing I would do is say, are any of these my senator? I don't think any of these are your senator because when is your senator, right? I'm not hearing you. By the way, conversely, yeah, it doesn't matter. You just pick something. You know that Helen Keller quote, just pick something. Conversely, you can look and see, so what committees does my rep sit on? Because I know my voice has more impact if my elected sits on a committee. And for example, if I go back to the Senate committees, uh, this is health and long-term care. Uh, let's go to the Senate committees. Let's go to environment, energy, and technology. And the truth is, I picked up my pet area of um, data privacy uh, because my elected was the chair of this committee. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be sending him mails about this, even though it wasn't one I tracked and I didn't follow and I wasn't as passionate about. But I care about David data privacy very much. And I had a little bit of experience this from working in high tech. And so um, I actually always looked up uh, where my where my elected sit, and then I might send them extra mails because I knew he was so influential in this and Washington state is not where it needs to be in my humble opinion on data privacy. 
Um, so that's what's really important about looking at uh, who's on committees and what they do. Now, you can also sign up, if we go back to bill information, you can also sign up to get notifications on a bill. I tend not to do that because you get so many notifications, like um, the most minor stuff. And I just want to know about cutoff dates and, and when I have to contact people. But you can look at a bill and, and, and ask to get a fee. Um, the last thing, because I'm feeling this is less helpful when I do this session and we're not, um, the legislature is not meeting because the last time I did this, the legislator was active and there was a lot that we could do here. It's a little bit less, um, but let's go to a bill. Let's find a good bill. You know, last year I knew these by heart and now I'm like, what are the bill numbers? Bill. Uh, 1202. Uh, okay, this was uh, 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 civil remedies uh, for people harmed by police. Um, if you go down to the bottom, this is why I love our website. Uh, it's, it's really an amazing website. If you didn't get a chance to listen in to public comment or the, 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 the hearing, they have all the videos and you'll be noted, you, you just look up, well, when was the public hearing? Oh, the public hearing was January 26th at 10 a.m. You can click on it and listen to the video. You can hear what the rep, what the Senator, what the rep said. You can figure out what, what's going on there. You can, I have gone in and listened on occasion, not always, Right. And then I've sent emails to my elected saying, thank you very much for what you said in your passion or conversely, you know, I appreciated your vote, but uh, I really care about this topic and I didn't see you engaging very much in the session. And I'd really like to talk to you about it. You'd be surprised. They'll they'll make a note. They're like, damn, they're watching my video. They're watching what I say. They're watching if I pay attention or if they're even there because uh, not all reps are at all sessions. So this is fabulous. As soon as it's over, at the end of the day, they will publish um, all the videos of the public hearings that you might have missed. With that, I'm going to stop and open it up. Oh my goodness. Our Thanks, we're Karen, just we're Everyone drop. Damn, no one well, said Well, right anything. at one. I think most people plan right for one, but we've got this uh, recorded. I'm going to hit stop recording now because we'll.